Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars figure review. Next up for you today we're going to be taking a look at one of the very last comic packs that Hasbro ever released. Um, this last wave of comic, back, uh, comic packs um, was released in 2010 um, and they were released through online retail at Entertainment Earth. Um, and that was the only place you could get these packs um, unless you were lucky enough to have um, an independent toy retailer um, near you where you could pop down and pick them up and um, that's what I did I managed to pick this set up from my local Forbidden Planet and I paid a reasonable price for it so I really can't complain the pack that I want to give you a look at contains two Mandalorians and this is usually the pack that I really wanted to pick up the most from this last wave of comic packs and it contains this guy this is Montross and the second figure in the pack is this guy Jasta Muriel now these two characters appear in the uh, Star Wars comic book Jango Fett Open Seasons um, I haven't had a lot of time to read the comic book yet um, but I believe that these comics were set um, quite a bit before um, the Clone Wars um, so I think it was just around the time that Darth Sidious recruited um, Count Dooku to his cause um, so yeah um, I'm not really clued up on the characters backstories or the history or the story told in the comics uh, if someone wants to leave comments and just explain it in a little bit please feel free to do so um, as you'll be educating me in the long run um, here's the packaging that the comic pack comes in um, unfortunately it's still in the red and white legacy collection packaging um, it would have been nice for these packs to have been released in the blue and black Shadow of the Dark Side packaging very similar to the Comic Con exclusive sets that were released on the front of the box you've got an image of Jasta Muriel and Montross as well as the comic in the background and as you'll see there even though I picked this one up um, at Forbidden Planet it still has the Entertainment Earth exclusive sticker on the front on the back you've got an image of the figures from the comic as well as a brief description next to that so feel free to pause the video if you wish um, and then underneath you've got um, some other comic packs available in the last wave of sets um, interestingly enough this comic pack on the end featuring a um, Luke Skywalker in a white X-Wing jumpsuit and a um, Bespin style Han Solo figure was never released and uh, we've yet to find out on the fate of that pack so quite an interesting one that but you'll see a couple of the other sets there in the wave so very very cool um, just to give you an idea of what you'll be reading if you pick up this comic pack I'll just give you a quick example of some of the pages um, basically this is just an all out Mandalorian war and there's some awesome artwork um, in this comic book I'm not going to read it um, on camera but uh, we'll give you a look at some of the very cool imagery Chango Fett's got quite a different appearance in this comic book so he's barely recognisable um, and as I said I haven't had a lot of time to read it so I can't spoil anything for you um, thankfully enough but yeah there you go that's the comic apparently a very good one so I can't wait to read it now onto the figures um, we'll take a look at Justin Mareel first here he is um, basically all this guy is is a Django Fett repaint with a few added parts um, obviously he comes with a new weapon um, a cape as well, a soft goods cape he also has a new belt, new pistols and a new head sculpt underneath the helmet very very cool figure indeed really like the colour scheme of the armour and one really cool detail that, we, that I picked up on um, not so long ago was the Mandalorian skull emblem that is on the uh, stock of, uh, not the stock um, sort of the back piece of the blaster you've got that Mandalorian skull emblem sculpted on there which is one of the coolest features of this figure in my opinion um, and obviously he's got this sort of machete weapon in his hand which is uh, quite intimidating very cool co um, color scheme as I said there um, the pistols are removable from the holsters on the belt and how well you can see those the cape sort of gets in the way a little bit there you go very coolly designed uh, blasters they fit nice and tightly inside the holsters um, same jetpack as Django Fett obviously once again just repainted 
same helmet as Django Fett as well, once again in a different colour. And as I said, underneath he does indeed have a completely new head sculpt, which strangely enough has a uh, quite an odd resemblance to Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> so there we go. The cape can be removed, all you do is simply take off the jetpack and remove the head and the uh, cape can be removed over the head. So very very cool and in terms of articulation he has a ball jointed neck, shoulders, elbows and swivel forearms, a ball jointed torso, swivel hips, ball hinged knees and ball hinged ankles. Um, other than that there's not really much else to say about this figure. Um, he is very impressive though and I really do like um, Mandalorians so this pack was definitely a must have. Um, and as I said yeah I really do like the colour scheme on the figure. Something a little bit different. Also on his shoulder there, you'll see what looks like the remnants of the Mandalorian skull emblem on his shoulder as well. So that's very, very cool. So there we go, that is Jasta Mareel. Um, what I really like about the figure as well is that the cape is made out of the same material um, that the uh, General Lando Carizian Vintage Collection figure is made out of. Um, so it's a very nice and uh, very nicely flowing uh, fabric, which is really cool. So yeah. There we go. That's Jasta Mareel. Now on to personally my favourite figure from the set. This is Montross. Once again, not entirely sure what role he plays in the comic book, but he's a very nicely designed character and an even nicely designed figure. Um, this guy um, utilises various new parts and also other elements of various other figures. He has the helmet of Boba Fett, which is evident from the dint on the side. He also has Boba Fett's jetpack, once again repainted to match Montross's colours. He also has, from what I can tell, a recycled and repainted Boba Fett torso. He has new arms, a new belt, and the legs of um, the Mandalore figure from the uh, Fett Legacy Evolution set. He's sort of the uh, the ancient Mandalorian warrior um, that sort of looks like a mummy. Um, he has the same legs as that figure. Once again, does come with a very nicely designed cape, which once again can be removed if you take off the jetpack and the head. It just slots over the top. He's got a sleeveless um, upper outfit, which looks very cool, makes him look very intimidating. Um, very nice colour scheme. Really do like this blue and grey sort of ornate look that Montross has. Uh, once again the helmet can be removed and underneath he's got quite a peculiar head sculpt. Not something we've ever seen before. And the helmet can be uh, slotted over the top, looks very nice in place. Got a very cool sort of decal or decal on the side of the helmet as well, if we can just get the camera to focus on that. Um, absolutely love the design of this belt that he's wearing. It's very, very cool and very nicely detailed. And he's got some killer blasters in his holsters. Um, if I just take those out and give you an example. Really beastly looking things. And they fit very snugly inside the holsters on the figure. And he also comes with uh, a rather large blaster rifle as well which once again is absolutely beastly very very nice so we're getting a good look at Montross very very nice figure indeed uh, I think that's just about it in terms of detail um, articulation wise he once again is a very nicely designed figure ball jointed shoulders, um, neck, elbows, swivel wrists Swivel waist, swivel hips, ball hinge knees, and ball hinge ankles, and overall a very menacing looking figure. I forget whether it's either Jasta Mareel or Montross who meets their demise in the comic, um, so it's kind of sad to see these really awesome looking Mandalorian warriors meet their demise, but yeah, they are just two awesome looking figures, and I'm so happy that I was able to pick these up. Definitely ones worth adding to the collection if you can find them. I do know that these go for an absolute premium on eBay, 
um, so don't be fooled into paying over the top for these guys um, but I do think they are worth every single penny they are awesome figures and highly recommended um, only if you're a fan of Mandalorians though if you're not bothered about this type of character then I'd give them a miss but if you love the expanded universe and you love the Mandalorians then definitely pick this set up so I think I've covered just about every detail on these figures I hope you've enjoyed having a look at them and I'll be back with some more reviews very soon until next time keep collecting and may the force be with you